Hello, welcome to my series about old shopping mazurkas. Today we have finally arrived to my favorite opus, my favorite opus of all, Opus 50. Uh, opus 50 uh, was composed more or less um, about 1842. It was published in 1842 and well, we suppose that Chopin was composing this opus in the summer of 1842 when he was staying in Nohain, uh, in the French countryside, uh, together with Georges Saint and for a short period of time also with uh, Eugène de la Croix, his friend and famous French painter. And uh, in fact, he, he got a, quite a good time there, but uh, in reality he was recovering one of the greatest trauma of his life, um, which was the death of his close friend and roommate, Jan Matuszyński. This is very important to know because, uh, as I said in some other episodes, and as maybe you already know, Chopin mazurkas are, it's, it's a genre uh, that is a kind of Chopin's diary, Chopin's musical diary. It's very special, and I'm sure you agree with me, that the mazurkas are completely different from all the other Chopin music. In Mazurka, Chopin is experimenting new ideas, new harmonies, uh, new structures, uh, new ways of writing melodies. But most of all, Chopin is expressing his soul. Uh, he's extremely sincere in the Mazurkas and always is always expressing his soul. Unlike in, for example, Waltzes, when uh, he he was able to write a fantastically funny and jo full of jokes was while feeling sad or missing his country or missing his parents or whatever. Anyway, he could, but in Mazurkas he just didn't want to. Whenever he, he felt bad usually, because most of his life he didn't really feel happy, uh, to, to feel better he sat down and composed Mazurka. Um, and he himself was saying that this is his subjective, um, his subjective feelings put into the music. And knowing this, and knowing one other thing in Chopin's biography, which also was a kind of tragedy, that his former love, the woman he wanted to marry, and they were very close to actually get married. Uh, Maria Wojinska. She got married with another man exactly in 1842. Uh, and we know from some letters that Chopin didn't forget her, even if he was in a relationship with Georges Saint. He, he really felt pretty terrible when he found out that his, uh, his great love married somebody else. We can imagine this feeling, but and now when we listen to the beginning of this mazurka, it's like a contradiction of everything I just said, because the the beginning, the first page, well, let's say the first page of the mazurka is just an explosion of happiness. So you can say, what are what is he talking about? This is a happy piece. Of course, it is. Just listen. Then the phrase like short phrase B Again. 
then phrase C. And now here we don't have a happiness anymore. And what is very important, what I found out, what I found in one of my favorite books, uh, Chopin in the Eyes of His Students, a book written by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger, uh, we have the quotation uh, from Lenz, Wilhelm Lenz. It was, uh, he was a Chopin student. And he writes about this mazurka, that Chopin considered this mazurka as an extremely difficult to play. And as he, he put emphasis especially on the episode, which is the modulating episode to E flat major. And the modulating episode to E flat major, we have here the, the notes, maybe, maybe you can see. Anyway, it's exactly the episode which I'm going to play for you now. And what is for me very, well, strange, I would say, or very special and unique is that, can you imagine, when this episode comes, it's not, it's not happy in, at all. And after that episode, we will never come back to this happiness with, which we had before. And not only in this mazurka, but in the whole opus. Every time in this opus, whenever we hear Polish folk dances, Mazur, Oberek, Kojawiak, every time this is piano pianissimo. Every time Chopin wants us to play it mezza voce, piano pianissimo. So it's not a true happiness and it's it's like a symbol of something being far, far, far away, of only recalling Poland. And, well, it's, it's very deep and, 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 uh, and our imagination can work, but what I just wanted to show you is something that when I saw it, I, I, had, I had goosebumps all over my body when I found out that after this, happiness but which now is to be played piano on the score so and of course it is happy because the melody is happy but we are not we are not exploding from happiness you know what I mean this is something that for me it's like oh maybe the beginning was something maybe in Chopin's soul that Chopin wanted to be like that but the reality is different. So after that, we will never experience that again. Never ever. And then we have a very mysterious part, which is part, well, it's part D, let's say, which is, which sounds strange. It is very mysterious with, uh... for me here we have death. In fact, this is like a death. Either we can hear some bells, bells here. And also other bells here. These notes, these two notes, I'm not making them up. I mean, they are, they, there is an accent written in the score. Chopin is saying us, these notes are important. So, is this a melody? Well, I, would, I wouldn't call it a melody. 
we will have many beautiful melodies in, in, in this opus. Uh, for example, in the second mazurka, uh, which is a fantastic melody, one of the best of Chopin. But here, suddenly, so that's why I say it's a death, because for me it's almost like a death of melody, the death of music. Well, of course, it's all, all is a symbol. But if we consider this as we can also consider this as one part of Chopin's soul, one part of Chopin's feelings. Loneliness. Why one part? Because after that we have another part. This seems almost like it's a completely different piece. Will you agree with me? This it doesn't suit here. After this tragic moment, we have suddenly almost like it. We have. It's like the second phrase is trying to cheer up the first one. It's trying to say, "Come on, let's dance. Don't be so depressed." Life is also something happy. Life is a mixture between happy and sad. And let's just be happy. Let's just dance. But no, the same bells. And now again the second phrase. And now we have the coda, where in the left hand, what can you see in the left hand? What can you hear? Of course, we can hear the beginning. But in a minor, in C minor, C minor, so one of the darkest, one of the darkest keys, um, and it's in the left hand, so it's a man, or it's 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 more serious, I would say, than the beginning. More sad, right? And then the answer in the right hand. how it ends. It ends actually in G major, so it ends quite... Uh, well, the whole mazurka is in G major. Mm, but it seems like it's going to end in a minor, but then at the end it comes back to major again. But anyway, that what I just showed you is actually just an introduction to my episode. A little long, but an introduction. Why an introduction? Introduction. Because, uh, well, I... I consider this Opus 50 as a very difficult to actually to absorb and understand. Even though it's 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 nice to listen to, but to really go deeply enough to to understand this music, I think one needs to listen to it many times and analyze it and understand it. So I will try to be as clear uh, and easy to understand as possible, so that you can also experience this fantastic feeling when when you listen to this opus, you just sit down, you take put the recording on, close your eyes, and understand. For me, I think it's a fantastic uh, a fantastic feeling, especially if you are not a musician, because uh, this is the main reason why I am doing these videos. When I decided to do all the mazurkas here and put them on YouTube, put them on uh, on Facebook also, uh, and just to share um, with, especially with non, not musicians, uh, but not only, just with music lovers, 
of course, it's a my way of understanding, but it's it's as close to the spirit of Chopin as I can get and as I can touch him. Anyway, let's start now from the beginning. So what I said as what I said at the beginning, we have the explosion of happiness, the typical Polish dance uh, mazur. Uh, with this dotted rhythm and we can imagine a group of people dancing and then the second phrase ends a little bit down so this happiness is a little bit uh, put down now but then again modulation and, and we come to the minor which is but it's not really very sad but just listen how fantastically this phrase is built three times the same opening it's a little bit like asking questions question second time third, third time then after that the answer it's also three times the same, uh, but what comes after that is every time different. So just compare it. First time, second time, and third time. And wait, 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 wait. So Chopin is, in the third time, he's doing a fantastic thing. He's pro He's being he's prolong, prolonging the, the 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 last bar of the phrase long 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 and open a new phrase and this is the end of the short part A which we can we can call it a theme of a rondo because now we have uh, we have the second phrase. And this second phrase is already something uh, which is not really happy. We have a very interesting thing. We have a this is a, this is pain, right? A forte, and then immediately piano, and so on the basis of this note, we have far away some folk Polish melody. second time and we come back to the A so this is a very short intermezzo we can call it uh, something different moment uh, probably of the whole opus as I said to you before uh, even Chopin uh, put emphasis on this uh, episode and why is it's simply because well this is another theory that, that I have another theory is as I told you we don't know when Chopin uh, when Chopin we don't know exactly when Chopin was composing this mazurkas because he didn't put the date exactly when he started but as we know, the, the music inside his head was being born very slowly. So my another of my theories is, uh, which might be true, that Chopin started to compose this mazurka before the death of his friend. And during composing this mazurka, maybe he had already some idea of this mazurka, different idea. And then this terrible thing happened and it was really terrible for Chopin because you know first of all Chopin was exactly in the room 
next to his friend when he died. And he felt terribly lonely because he was one of his best friends, his roommate. They spent a lot of time together, so probably he was even closer than all his family because all his family, mother, father, sisters, they were in Poland, so the contact was only through letters. Uh, so for Chopin it was like he, he lost half of himself. And then maybe he changed his idea, he changed his mind and he, he could not compose uh, the happy piece anymore. So he like turned over and created a masterpiece which drives us to sadness. And it starts from here because here we have the left hand in this part, let's call it part C, uh, is uh, C because we already had A and B. Well, the B was this. The part C, another in interesting thing is that we can hear, probably for the first time uh, in all the mazurkas of Chopin, that he was changing his language and he got a lot of inspiration from Johann Sebastian Bach music because here we have two melod independent melodies in both hands together before when Chopin was using two melodies in mazurkas usually it was a dialogue one melody then another one one melody another one here we have two at the same time and in this opus there is quite a lot of polyphony and here we can he we can hear uh, it for the first time so two melodies <laughs> to listen, right? But left hand is important, but right hand is also important. Let's listen to these melodies without accompaniment. Also for young pianists, this is a way to practice it, so that uh, we can follow two melodies when we play it. E flat major, but only for a second. have to connect is the connection with the beginning and then we come to the beginning but piano piano so soft so after this what we hear what we heard maybe this was a a, a kind of trip a travel then we are far away from it was before or we are different people maybe and this is why i think this theory is good because he, here we have something very sad and then we are not the same people anymore persons we are not the same person something happened to this last part uh, which um, which we have well also a, a few a few voices four voices actually uh, but we have these bells and as I said a death so something very very 
heavy and deep and mysterious. And the waving, right? I think this music is very sincere. And then the second person. thing that I'm thinking of, as I told you before, Maria Wojcinska got married and here we have two people. We can picture lonely and well sick and not really very happy Chopin suffering uh, here. It's like he's thinking, I'm here alone. Well, he was not really alone because he was with George Sam, but as we know, he had in his heart his former love. That was that's absolutely for sure, because he never even he never uh, he never threw out all the letters from her. He was keeping them in a special place, and he wrote on the on the the, the package of this letter. He wrote. Uh, well, my poverty in Polish, uh, which means my my misery. I I would explain it in English. So that's that's this. And then he is thinking, oh, but there is she, married, happy without me. the end but in, instead of the end we have the A part A but completely different and again polyphony left hand so with the same person that at the beginning but can you hear it it's completely different man much older much more unhappy and here the answer of the lady. And they sing together. That's the end of the whole the whole mazurka. So the ending is is really magic, very deep, and uh, and very magic. We also can hear uh, a pain here, harmonically. Listen, this harmony. Eighteen forty-two, composed only to express pain. There is no other explanation. This is so beautiful. That's how it starts Opus 50. It starts with Mazurka, which at the beginning is very happy, but after some time, not anymore. And it will never be. Um, don't you think it's special? I think it's the first Mazurka like this. And uh, this is my 
31st episode which I'm doing and I don't remember Mazurka which would be the same of course we don't have the same Mazurka so that's that's obvious uh, but it's it's impressive that Chopin still inspired uh, to compose mazurkas which are different because his life is different um, so another thing interesting for musicians especially as you those of you who know my other episodes remember that in every single opus uh, i managed to find something one thing which all the mazurkas in the same opus have in common uh, sometimes it's not easy, sometimes it's obvious, but I think it's very important to discover that because uh, Chopin himself was aware of that for sure. There must be something which connects all the mazurkas in one opus, because one opus is like a family. So the, the DNA, we can say, should be there. And what is the DNA of this opus 50? Well, it was not so easy to catch, but I have two uh, things that I found, which I want to share with you. First one is that every time, except the big, except from the beginning, every time whenever we have a Polish dancing melody in this opus, it's always to be played piano, piano pianissimo, mezza voce, very silent. That's for the first time uh, in 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 the genre in the mazurkas genre. And it's the DNA, something which all the three have in common. And another interesting thing which all the three have in common is the beginning of each of them. Because each of these three mazurkas starts from the dominant. For musicians, you know what I'm talking about. And it doesn't start from the tonic, so from the, 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 the key which actually the mazurka is in. Uh, Chopin is uh, making us wait for this. The first mazurka, G major, it starts from dominant. And he, here is the, the, the tonic. The second mazurka, which is in A flat major, it starts and then then we have the tonic and the third mazurka in C sharp minor starts from G sharp which is the dominant and here here we have the C sharp minor. Or oh, I can't wait for the episode about this mazurka because this is my absolute favorite mazurka, um, mm -hmm. love of my life, and uh, in my opinion, the greatest masterpiece uh, which Chopin wrote. I call it Ballad Number no. Five, and why I call it Ballad Number no. Five, I will tell you, well, in two weeks. Um, so please stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Maybe I just play for you. Uh, for the very end, the whole Opus 50 number one.
thank you very much and see you again.